Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to installment of Scott Selections here for Friday, December 9th. For again, today's play of the day, quick recap what happened yesterday. We had a loss in the NFL with Devontae Adams over 88 and a half receiving yards at minus 113 on FanDuel. Line closed at 90 and a half, and it looked really good early. Adams had 71 yards in the first half, which means we just needed 18 yards in the second half with the best receiver in the NFL. And he had zero catches for zero yards. He finished with 71. I can't even blame Adams because Derek Carr had a total of 11 passing yards in the entire second half. The Raiders really, really just punted the game. I can't believe they lost. But anytime you back a bad a team with a bad coach, uh, you could kind of run into some bad game plan decisions and bad in-game management with regard to the clocks or just the play calling. But the Raiders simply put, played not to lose instead of trying to win. And as a result, they did nothing the entire second half. It also made no sense game plan-wise that the Rams secondary was awful all season long, statistically speaking, and yet the Raiders attempted 20 passes compared to 38 rushes. I don't really understand anything about the Raiders' game plan, but the second half, 11 passing yards in the entire half. They only attempted seven passes. So it wasn't like Carr was missing a bunch of guys. He wasn't good in the game, but I don't know how you go through a half and only attempt seven passes in a dome against an awful secondary. It made no sense. They deserved to lose the game. But either way, we picked up a loss there and look for a bounce-back winner here on Friday. And for today's play, they're going to pivot back to the NBA. We'll get a matchup between the Hawks and the Nets taking place at around 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And for this matchup, we're going to take a first-half play. We're going to take the Nets' first half, minus 3.5 at minus 125 on points bet. Time recording of 1.30 a.m. Eastern time. Cumberland is why I like the Nets' first half here. First reason, both teams heading in opposite directions. The Nets have been very good lately, as the Nets have won five of their last six games. Meanwhile, the Hawks have kind of fallen off a cliff here, as the Hawks have lost five of their last seven games. A couple reasons why I'm going to take the first half instead of the full game, which I'll get into in a minute. But to go through the numbers here for the first half point differential, the Nets have been pretty good this season, as the Nets have a first half point differential of plus 2.4 which ranks eighth in the league. And at home, the Nets have been even better in the first half as the Nets have a first-half point differential at home of plus 3.9. Meanwhile, Atlanta not been very good in the first half. First-half point differential of plus 0.3, which ranks 16th. On the road, uh, point differential the first half of negative 1.4. So Atlanta has not been a great first-half team. The Nets have. However, the Nets have been an atrocious second-half team and they really have a hard time of playing with their food and letting opponents back into games. We just saw it against Charlotte in their last game. They were up 20, and next thing you know, it's a three-point game in the fourth quarter. I'm not going to bother dealing with the second half. The Nets seem to always kick it into autopilot in the fourth quarter, and you see a massive run by the opposition. For that reason, I'm going to stick with the first 24 minutes in this game. But to go through the actual injury report, Atlanta is injured to hell and back, and the Nets are actually pretty healthy. Uh, Atlanta is going to be missing DeJounte Murray for a couple weeks and John Collins for a couple weeks. DeAndre Hunter uh, missed the last couple of games, but he is questionable. So he might play, he might not play, but he's missed the last three. So Atlanta might be down three starters in this game. And one of their main starters who's left is Trey Young. And even though he's playing in this game, he's been battling a couple of injuries or illnesses, and he's been awful lately. So Trey was battling a shoulder injury. It's why he had an altercation there with McMillan, his head coach. Uh, earlier this past week, he also had an illness, apparently, and the last two games, he has shot just 38.5% from the floor. In the last five games, he has shot 14.7% from the three-point line. So he can claim that the shoulder's not bothering him and that he's going to play through it, but if you're shooting 14.7% from three with volume as you know a star player in the league, I think you're definitely not 100%, and yet I do think Trey should probably struggle in this game as a result. But you're looking at who might start instead of DeJounte or Hunter or even Collins. You're looking at a potential starting lineup of Trey Young, maybe Bogdan Bogdanovich. I'll get back to him in a second. Maybe Aaron Holiday. You have A.J. Griffin, who's a rookie. You have Jalen Johnson potentially starting. But the point is, Atlanta's bench was really not good to begin with. And now some of the bench players have to start. Atlanta's very compromised. And I mentioned Bogdanovich because he came back from injury recently However, he's been really, really bad ever since he came back. He's played three games so far this season. He is shooting 28.9% from the floor and 23.1% from three. And to go through the last game that he played, he came in off the bench against the Knicks. And he was easily the worst player on the floor. And to go through the numbers here, 
Uh, he went three for 16 from the floor and 0 for 10 from three in 25 minutes. Now he might start. He might not. The point is he's definitely a rusty since coming back. I like Bogdanovich as a player, but I have to at least acknowledge that's going to take him some time to fully get back into his regular form. Three for 16, 0 for 10 from three in his last game. I don't exactly trust him in the spot, but you're running out of bodies for Atlanta. I mentioned they might be without three starters. Trey Young has been awful lately. Bogdanovich might get promoted to the starting lineup, but he's been terrible this season. They really just don't have many options, and I think that the Nets will be able to exploit it because Durant historically has been very good against Atlanta. Kyrie's been very good lately. Uh, you look at the supporting cast, and it's actually played pretty well lately. And they're also going to be getting some reinforcements as Ben Simmons is back for this game. He missed the last four games. I'm not sure if Simmons is going to start or come off the bench. He might come off the bench, but the point is the Nets are close to full strength. Atlanta is far from it. And I think the Nets at home should get off to a pretty fast start here on Friday night. But if you want to go through the actual head-to-head, the Nets have owned the Hawks in the head-to-head as the Nets are 12-3 and straight up in the last 15 meetings. But the Nets can easily win this game in blowout fashion. I could definitely see it. But I am concerned about the Nets being so bad late in games that I do think that the first half is probably the better play since it's safer. I'll take the Nets to get out to a fast lead against an injured opponent in the first 24 minutes. Play that once again here for Friday, December 9th is going to be on the Nets first half, minus three and a half and minus 125 on points bet. Bye, everyone.